All right, we'll go ahead and get started. Thank you all for being here for our COVID-19 slash RSV slash flu media availability. Uh, on the docket today will be Kevin Dick, District Health Officer for Washoe County. Uh, we'll also have uh, some people available for questions uh, at the end. Kevin, if uh, you're ready to get started, please unmute and go ahead. Yes, thank you, Scott, and thank you everybody for being here today. Uh, I'll begin with our COVID-19 update. Our active respiratory virus season continues uh, as rates of COVID-19 are uh, remain uh, higher um, and we have flu and RSV that are extremely high levels for this time of year. Uh, for our COVID-19 uh, seven day average, our moving average for new cases per day is around 55. Uh, this is actually down slightly from last week when it was at 67. Um, so that's good news. However, our wastewater data is showing an uptick in COVID-19 detections uh, that have uh, occurred in the monitoring uh, at the beginning of December. So we would expect to see new uh, cases increase based on that data. Uh, and we recognize that the reported cases of COVID-19, that data is very incomplete uh, given that so many people are doing at-home testing. Uh, so we do know that uh, uh, cases are are uh, still high uh, and we are expecting increases based in, in wastewater and uh, the uh, respiratory season that's occurring. We also, uh, with the approval of the uh, children uh, six month and older bivalent vaccines, uh, we expect to be providing those vaccinations beginning next week through the health district. Uh, we are uh, just getting our software uh, platform updated to support that, but we expect to be able to provide those uh, beginning Monday um, through the health district. For RSV, we're reporting another 211 RSV cases in Washoe County. Uh, so that uh, brings us to a total of 1,224. Now the, the 211 cases that were reported last week is the third most uh, of any week this respiratory season. Um, and while cases are down uh, from the previous week when it was 263, it's uh, it's still a huge number. Uh, we have seen um, cases go uh, a week where we had cases go down and then went back up again. So I think it's uh, way too early to presume that we've hit the peak of this season and we just need to see how our numbers roll in. Um, but that uh, the number that we have already of cases since the beginning of October, 1,224, exceeds the, the total cases that we had all of last flu season, um, which was just under uh, 1,100. And flu season runs through the first 20 weeks of 2023 that we have ahead of us. And so we are just at phenomenal levels of RSV uh, that are occurring in our community already. And in Washoe County, the rate of RSV infection is nearly three times as high as the rate uh, for the rest of the state. Washoe County's RSV rate is 53 cases per 100,000 population. The next closest rate is in Carson City where they have 28 cases per 100,000 population. And the state average is 18 cases per 100,000. So we're experiencing very high levels of RSV here. Um, and as a state, in total, we're seeing nearly double the RSV cases compared to last year. Scott's going to post a link to the state's respiratory illness dashboard uh, and look for the RSV tab there, and you'll be able to see some uh, graphical representations of that. If we compare our rates uh, to the last five years, uh, it's astounding to see how prevalent RSV has become this year compared to those last five years. The pressure of RSV and other respiratory illnesses is hitting our hospitals um, and they um, remain at high levels, particularly of pediatric cases that are occurring. Uh, so it's uh, still highly recommended that you contact your pediatrician if you think your child has RSV. Uh, and if breathing issues persist, then consider going to the ER. There is some good news in that the Northern Nevada Medical uh, Center announced today their Sierra uh, Medical Center now has a pediatric inpatient care. 
Uh, I understand that they're going to be beginning at a fairly low capacity and expanding uh, in January, uh, but we hope this will help alleviate any stress that other medical providers like Renown are experiencing to care for kids with RSV and other illnesses. I think it's important that we um, remain attentive to prevention. These high rates of respiratory illness are not just in Nevada. Um, this is a problem that we see occurring across the country. Many of you have travel plans already booked for the coming weeks, and some of those who are prone to hosp some of those who are prone to hospitalization due to flu, COVID-19, or and RSV uh, really want to uh, take additional precautions. Make sure you're wearing your masks uh, when you're you're traveling, and uh, wash your hands frequently to try to avoid uh, contracting or spreading the disease. If there are situations when you're feeling sick or your, your child is feeling sick, um, you have a, an important decision to make. And if you're sick, we urge you to stay home and away from those who are at risk of serious complications. Please uh, uh, think about other ways to spend time together. Um, remember, it's okay to wear a mask if you're unsure and talk to your doctor. So with the holidays approaching, I want to wish everyone a happy holiday season, but I urge everyone to get vaccinated if you haven't done so already, both for flu and COVID-19. Hand washing and cleaning high touch surfaces is even more important with flu and RSV going around, as is ventilating uh, areas where you're meeting and gathering with others. Uh, and please stay home and avoid infecting others if you're ill. So thank you, Scott, I'm uh, open for questions. Okay, thank you, Kevin. Uh, we will have Kevin available for questions. Uh, we also have some other staff on on the call that can answer anything else. So if you have a question, please go ahead or put it in the chat and I can read it out loud. Hey, this is Lucia Starberg with KUNR. I'm curious, do you know the percentage of like, uh, I guess, people who are being hospitalized for RSV or not um, out of the total cases? I do, I do not have those statistics, uh, and uh, Dr. Dow is not available today. But Lucia, I'll have, uh, I'll see if we can, if we have any statistics for that, and have Scott follow up with you. Thank you. Um, I was also wondering, can you talk more about the vaccine you mentioned at the beginning of the call? Yeah, the um, COVID bivalent vaccine that is for the six month and older children uh, has now been approved. Uh, previously, we had a monovalent uh, vaccine was the only uh, vaccine that was available for the six month and older uh, children, the very the young children under five or six years old uh, for the Moderna or, or the uh, Pfizer vaccine. And so now that's approved and uh, actually we're no longer allowed to provide the monovalent uh, vaccine now that the bivalent is available. And so we'll be begin administering that next uh, Monday is our plan. And as I mentioned, we just have to uh, tweak the uh, some of the stuff on our software platform for scheduling those vaccinations. Uh, and we're working on that. We expect to be providing those on Monday. Thank you. Um, I guess I'll just uh, jump in one more time. I guess to, to confirm at this point have with the new cases you announced have RSV cases surpassed um, last season's total. Yes, they have. So the uh, the number that I um, mentioned was uh, I think 12, 1224. Uh, I don't have the total for last year off the top of my head, but it was a little under uh, 1100. So um, we have since uh, the beginning of October uh, surpassed the number of cases that we had through all of last year's flu season. Uh, and that flu season ran through the first 20 weeks of 2022. So um, we're early in the flu season and we've already uh, surpassed the, the high number that we had for the entire flu season last year. Thank you. Uh, I'll just jump in with one more question. Um, since RSV has, this isn't the first time we've seen RSV, I guess, why do you think it's so bad this season? Well, um, the, the term that I've heard being used uh, nationally is immunity debt. 
And so typically um, we have our youngest children uh, exposed to RSV uh, during their, their first two years. And um, RSV is spread in the, the general population. Uh, and because of that immunity that we get when we're very young and we're exposed, and then as we are exposed uh, again through our lives, um, we develop more immunity and RSV cases aren't usually very severe. With what's occurred through the, the COVID pandemic, and we've had people staying at home, uh, we've had people wearing masks, we've had some uh, school and, and daycares uh, shut down. Uh, we have a um, that uh, immunity debt that's developed because we haven't had those exposures uh, and maintain that immunity with RSV. And so that's what's being attributed to the spikes in RSV that we're seeing across the country. Thank you. Any other questions? Um, if you think your child has RSV, should you, like you mentioned, call their their doctor or nine one one? We we're asking that uh, parents begin with their uh, pediatric physician uh, or urgent care if uh, if the child doesn't seem to be in severe respiratory distress. Um, the you know if they're they're wheezing. Um, having difficulty breathing, then we would say, you know, call 911 or 911 or get them to the emergency room. But we want to avoid uh, everybody going to the emergency room. We'd like for parents to start with their pediatricians uh, so that people receive the appropriate level of care and we're not inundating our emergency departments and our hospitals with cases that don't need to be there. Thank you. Last call for questions. OK, thank you all for being here. Thank you, Kevin. Uh, we'll post this uh, recording on the COVID-19washo.com website. Uh, you can also reach out to me if you want the raw file. Otherwise, uh, let me know if you have any questions. And thanks again for being here. Happy holidays, everybody. <laughs>